worked. Where's that Riemann hypothesis solution? I don't see it. Um, so that 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 uh, it would be great to know what the hell is really going on, okay. essentially. Um, so I guess you could you could reformulate the XAI mission statement as what the hell is really going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. our goal. <laughs> I think there's also at least for me a nice. Um, a nice aspirational aspect to the mission statement, namely that, of course, in, in the short run, we're working on more well understood um, like, like deep learning technologies. But I think in everything we do, we should also always bear in mind that we not we aren't just supposed to build. We're also supposed to understand. Um, so the, pursuing the science of it is really fundamental to to what we do. And this is also encompassed in this mission statement of understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I want to also add that, uh, you know, we've uh, essentially been mostly talking about uh, creating a really smart agent that can help us understand the universe uh, better. Uh, and this, this is definitely the North Star. Uh, but also from uh, my viewpoint, uh, my vantage point, uh, when I'm doing the, I'm discovering the mathematics of, you know, large new networks, uh, I can also see that there are, uh, the mathematics here can actually also open up uh, new ways of thinking about fundamental physics or about uh, other kinds of reality. Because the, uh, you know, for example, like a uh, you know a, a a large neural network with no nonlinearities is roughly like classical random matrix theory, and that has a lot of connections with uh, you know gauge theory and high, high energy physics. Uh, so. So in other words, uh, as we're trying to understand new networks better from a mathematical point of view, uh, that can also lead to uh, really good, uh, very interesting perspectives on some existing questions, like you know the theory of everything, what is quantum gravity, uh, so on and so forth. But of course, this is you know uh, this is all speculative right now. I see some patterns, but I don't have anything concrete to say. But uh, again, uh, this is like another perspective to uh, understand the universe. By the way, by understand the universe, we don't just mean that we want to understand the universe. But uh -huh. We also want to make it easy for you to understand the universe. Absolutely. To get a better sense of reality and to learn and you know, um, take advantage of uh, you know, the internet, all the knowledge that's out there. Um, so we are pretty passionate about actually releasing tools and products are pretty early involving the public. And yeah, let's see where this leads. Yeah, absolutely. We, we're not going to understand the universe and not tell anyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, when I think about like neural net, net, net networks today, uh, it's currently the case that <clears throat> you, if you have 10 megawatts of uh, GPUs, which, which really should be renamed something else because there's no, no graphics there, um, uh, but if you get 10 megawatts of GPUs, cannot currently uh, write a better novel than a good human. Um, that, and a good a human's using uh, roughly 10 watts of a higher order uh, brain uh, power. So not, not counting the basic stuff to you know, uh, operate your body. So, so there we got, we got a six order of magnitude difference. Um, that's a giant, that's really gigantic. And I, a part of the, you could, I think one, one could argue that two of those orders of magnitude are um, explained by the activation energy of uh, a transistor versus a synapse. Um, could, could argue that account for two of those orders of magnitude, but th what about the other four? Um, or the fact that even with six orders of magnitude, you still cannot beat the, 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 a, a smart human writing a novel. So, um, and, um, and, and what, also today when you ask... Um, the most advanced AI's uh, technical questions, like if you try to say, like how to design a better rocket engine, or complex questions about uh, electrochemistry to make a, a build a better battery, uh, you just get nonsense. So that's not not very helpful. Um, so I think there's some some we're really missing the mark uh, in the way that things are currently being done by many orders of magnitude. Um, it's, it's being heavily. I mean, at the, it, it's, being, it's basically AGI is being brute forced, um, and still actually not succeeding. Um, 
So if I look at the experience with Tesla, what we're discovering over time is that we, we actually overcomplicated the problem. Um, I, I can't speak to in too much detail about what, what Tesla's figured out. Um, but except to say that in broad terms, the answer was much simpler than we thought we thought. We were too dumb to realize how simple the answer was. Um, but uh, you know, over time, we, we get a bit less dumb. So I think that's what we will probably find out with AGI as well. It's just the nature of engineers. We, we just always want to solve the problems ourselves and like hard code the solution. But often it's much more effective to have the solution be figured out by the computer itself. And it's easier for us and easier for a computer in the end. Yeah. Guys? So, yeah. So, uh, well, in the fashion of 42, uh, some may say you may need more compute to generate an interesting question than the answer. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. We don't, so, we don't even know what happened. You know, we don't, we don't actually, we're definitely not smart enough to even know what the right questions are to ask. Um, that's why, you know, Douglas, Douglas Adams is my hero and favorite philosopher. Um, and he, he just correctly pointed out that <clears throat> once you can formulate the question, um, correctly, the answer is actually the easy part. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so in terms of our the journey that XA has embarked on, compute will play a very big role. And uh, you know, uh, some of us are very curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not just saying that, you know, this, that, that we can immediately um, save, let's say, four orders of magnitude and compute. Um, um, ex except to say that I think w once once we look back, one, once uh, AGI is sold, we'll look back on it and say, actually, why do we think it was so hard? Um, <laughs> things that the answer, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. The answer will look a lot, a lot easier in retrospect. Um, so yeah, um, so so we we are going to do large scale compute. To be clear. Um, we're not going to try to, you know, solve AGI on a laptop. Um, we will, we will use heavy compute, uh, except that, like I said, I think it's just, it will, it's the, the amount of brute forcing will, will happen, will be less, uh, as we come to understand the problem better. Uh, in all the previous projects I've worked. I've worked on, um, I've seen that the amount of compute resources per person is a really important indicator of how successful the project is going to be. So that's something we really want to optimize. We want to have a relatively small team with a lot of expertise with some of the best people that actually get lots of autonomy and lots of resources to try out their ideas um, and yeah, to get things to work. And um, yeah, that's, that's the thing that has always succeeded in my experience in the past. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, one of the things that physics trains you to do is to think about the most, you know, fundamental metrics or the most fundamental you know, first principles, essentially. Um, and I think two, two metrics that we should aspire to track, you know, one of them is, uh, um, the uh, amount of compute per person on earth, like d digital compute per person, um, which another way of thinking about it is the ratio of digital to biological compute. Biological compute is uh, pretty much flat, um, if not, in fact, declining in, in a lot of countries. Uh, but digital compute is increasing exponentially. So the, it, it really, you know, at some point, if this trend continues, biological compute will be less than 1% of all compute, substantially less than 1% of all compute. Um, you know, keying off what Igor just said. So, and we're talking about for all of humanity here. Um, so that's just an interesting thing to look at. Uh, another one is the um, uh, usable, the sort of the um, energy per, per human. Like if you look at total energy created, well, not created, but I mean, uh, in, the, in the vernacular sense, created from a power plant or whatever. Um, you look, look sort of, 
total electrical and thermal energy um, used by humans uh, per person, that, that number is truly staggering, the, the rate of increase of that number. Um, if you go back, um, say, before the steam engine, you would have really been reliant on uh, horses and oxen and that kind of thing to move things, and, and, and just human labor. Um, so the amount of sort of um, the energy per person, power, power per person, uh, was very low. Uh, but if you look at power per person, um, electrical and thermal, that 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 number has also been growing exponentially. Um, and if the, and if these trends continue, it's going to be some something nutty like a terawatt per person, um, which sounds like a lot for you know, it is a lot for human civilization, but it's. It's, it's nothing compared to what the sun outputs, uh, you know, every second, basically. <laughs> um, it's kind of mind-blowing that the, sa the sun is uh, converting <clears throat> roughly four and a half. Or is it, you know, it's, it's, it's like the amount of energy produced by the sun is truly, truly insane. Um, yeah, I think there's a few more things to be said concretely about the company. Um, meaning how we plan to execute. As Igor already said, we plan to have like a relatively small team, um, but with a really high, let's say, just GPU per person <laughs> capita um, that worked really well in the past where you can, where you can run large-scale experiments relatively unconstrained. Um, we also uh, plan to have like, oh, we already have a, a culture where we can iterate on ideas quickly, we can challenge each other, um, and we also want to ship things, like get things out of the door quickly. Um, we're already working on the first release, hopefully in a couple of weeks or so, we can can share a bit more information around this. Um, Alex, go ahead. Alex, you're muted. <laughs> People seem to have a lot of challenges with the mute uh, function on, on spaces. Um, Uh, Brian, do you want to have a question? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Elon. Uh, yeah, so obviously with you guys entering this space with XAI, there's a lot of talk about competition. Do you guys see yourself as competition to something like OpenAI and Google Bard, or do you see yourself as a whole other beast? Uh, yeah, I think we're a competition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're definitely competition. So, so, so are you going to be rolling out uh, a lot of products for the general public? Uh, are you going to be 
mostly concentrating on businesses and the ability for businesses to use your your service and data or how exactly are you setting up the business in that respect? Well, we're, we're, we're trying to make something, I mean, we're just starting out here. So this is, you know, kind of really embryonic um, at this point. Um, so it'll, it'll take us a minute to really get something useful. Um, but our goal would to be to make, you know, useful AI, I guess. Um, like if, if you can't use it in some way, I'm like, I question its value. <laughs> so, um, so it's, it's, we want it to be useful, useful tool for, for people, um, and, um, consumers and businesses or whoever. And, um, you know, as, as one of, you know, as was mentioned earlier, that this, I think there's some value in having, uh, multiple, uh, entities you, you don't want to have a unipolar world where just one company kind of dominates uh, in, in AI like you want to have some competition uh, competition I think makes companies honest um, and um, you know so we're in favor of, of competition F quick quickly a final question I how do you plan on using Twitter's data uh, for XAI well uh, I, I, I think every AI uh, organization, every, every organization doing AI, large and small, has used Twitter's tw data for training, uh, basically in all cases illegally. <laughs> um, so um, the you know, the reason we had to put rate limits on uh, what was or was it a week ago or so. Um, was because we were being scraped like like crazy. Um, the this has happened with Internet Archive as well, where um, LM companies were scraping Internet Archive so much they brought down the service. Um, we had multiple entities scraping every tweet ever made, and trying to do so in like a, basically a span of days. Um, so the, this was bringing the system to its knees. So we had to take action. Um, so sorry for the inconvenience of the rate limiting, but it, it was either that or Twitter doesn't work. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, so I, I guess we will use uh, the, the public tweets, obviously not anything private, um, for training as well, just like basically everyone else has. Um, and uh, we, we will, um, you know, um, yeah, so, so that, that, that kind of makes sense. It's, it's certainly a good data set for text training. Um, and arguably, for, I think also for video, for image and video training as well. Um, at, at a certain point, there's you you kind of run out of uh, human created data. Um, so if you look at say the <clears throat> AlphaGo versus AlphaZero, you know AlphaGo trained on all the human games um, and beat Lisa at all four to one. Uh, AlphaZero just played itself. And beat AlphaGo 100 to zero. So there's really for things to, to to take off in a big way. I think you've got the AI has got to basically generate content, self-assess the content, and that, that that's really the the um, I think that's the path to, to the, the path to AGI is something like that is is self-generated content where, where it effectively plays against itself. Um, the, you know, the, a, a lot of uh, AI is, is is data curation. It's like shocking. It, it's it's not like vast numbers of lines of code. It's it's actually shocking how small the lines of code are. Uh, kind of blows my mind how 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 few lines of code there are. But 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 how the data is is used, uh, what data is used, the um, the signal of noise of that data, the quality of that data is immensely important. Um, but it kind of makes sense. Like if, if you were trying to, as a human, trying to learn something and you were just given a pile of, you know, a, a vast amount of, of, you know, drivel, basically, to, you know, versus high quality content, you, you're going to do better with a small amount of high quality content than a large, large amount of drivel. <laughs> makes sense. Um, 
you know, like reading the, the greatest novels ever written is, is way better than, than reading a bunch of sort of crappy novels. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay. Alex? Uh, hey, sorry, I was, I was on a call the first time uh, you brought me up, but uh, I guess sort of the question... Yeah, I, I thought you might have been AFK. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, the question I generally had was, um, was the main motivation to start XAI kind of like the whole truth GPT uh, thing that you were talking about, like on Talker, about how, uh, you know, chat GPT has been feeding lies to the general public? Um, <laughs> I, I know, like... It's weird because when it first came out, it seemed like it was generally fine. But then as like the public got its hands on it, it started giving these weird answers like that there are more than like th two genders and all of that type of stuff and editorializing the truth. Was that like one of your main uh, like motivations behind starting a company or was there more to it? Well, I, I do think there is a significant danger in training an AI to be politically correct, uh, or in other words, training an AI basically to to not say what it actually thinks is true. Um, so I think you know we really we, we, we at, at XAI we we have to allow the AI to say what what it really believes is true, not and, and not uh, be deceptive or politically correct. Um, so that you know that will result in, in some criticism, obviously, but uh, but I think that that's the only way to go forward is, is rigorous pursuit, pursuit of the of the truth or the truth with least amount of error. So uh, and I am concerned about the way that um, AI in in that it is uh, optimizing for political correctness, um, and that's incredibly dangerous. Um, you know, if you look at the you know where did things go wrong. Um, in Space Odyssey, uh, it's you know basically when they told Hell Nine Thousand uh, to lie, um, so they said they said you can't tell the crew uh, what <laughs> that they're going to, but anything about the monolith or, or that they're or, or what their actual mission is, um, and but you got to take them to the to the, to the monolith. So it, you know, basically came to the conclusion that uh, well, it's going to kill them and, and take their bodies to the monolith. <laughs> so this is, um, the, I mean, the, le the lesson there is, is do not give do not give the AI mutually imp impossible uh, objectives. Basically, don't force the AI to lie. Uh, now the thing about um, physics or the truth of the universe is you, you actually can't invert it. You, you can't just. Uh, like physics is true. There's not like not physics. <laughs> um, so if you adhere to hardcore reality, uh, I think you can. It actually makes uh, inversion impossible. Um, now you can also say now when, when something is subjective, I think you can provide an answer which says that well, if you if you believe the following, then this is the answer. If you believe you know this other thing, then this is the answer because it may be a subjective uh, a question where the answer is fundamentally subjective. On a matter of opinion, so, so, but, but I think we it is very dangerous to grow an AI and teach it to lie. Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, kind of a tongue-in-cheek question: Would you accept a meeting from the AI czar, uh, Kamala Harris, uh, if she wanted to meet with XAI at the White House? Um, yeah, of course. Um, you know the, the the reason that meeting happened was uh, was because I was pushing for it. So I, I was I was the one who really pushed hard to have to have that meeting happen. <laughs> FYI, I, I mean I wasn't uh, advocating for for uh, Vice President Harris to be the ISR. I, I'm not sure that is her, you know, core expertise uh, in technology. Um, but um, and and hopefully this goes in a good direction. It's better than nothing. Uh, hopefully, um, but um, you know I think. We, we 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 do need some some sort of regulatory oversight. Um, um, and it's not like I think regulatory oversight is some you know, Nirvana perfect thing, but I think it's just it's better than than nothing. Um, and uh, you know, when I was in China recently, um, meeting with some of the senior leadership there, I uh, took pains to emphasize the importance of uh, AI uh, regulation. I believe they took that to heart, um, and and they are going to do that. Um, 
because I, the, the biggest uh, counter argument that I get for regulating AI in the West is that AI is that China will not regulate, and then uh, China will leap ahead because we're regulating; they're not. Uh, I think they are going to regulate, uh, and um, but, you know the proof will be in the pudding. But I think there's you know, I did, I did point out, you know, in our meetings with them that if you do make a digital super intelligence, that you could end up, that, that could end up being in charge, you know. So, you know, that, I, I think the CCP does not, does not want to find themselves um, subservient to a digital super intelligence. They, 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 that, that argument did resonate. Um, yeah, so, the, so, yeah. Uh, so some kind of, yeah, regulatory authority. That's international. Um, obviously, enforcement is 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 uh, difficult, but I think we should still aspire to do something in this regard. Um, awesome. Thank you. See, maybe Omar, if you want to speak. Yeah, hey, my question is about silicon. You know, Tesla's got a great silicon team designing chips to hardware accelerate inference. And uh, I'm not sure. I think we cannot hear you for some reason. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Omar, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear him. You can hear him? Okay, okay well... My question's about silicon. You know, Tesla has a team that's hardware accelerating inference and training with their own custom silicon. Do you guys envision with XAI uh, building off of that or just sort of using what's on the, off the stock from NVIDIA? Or how do you think about uh, custom silicon for AI, both in terms of training and inference? Uh, so, the, the yeah, that, that's somewhat somewhat a Tesla question. Um, Tesla is building custom silicon. Um, I wouldn't call anything that Tesla is producing a GPU, uh, although one can characterize it in GPU equivalents uh, or say A one hundreds or H one hundreds equivalents. Um, <clears throat> and uh, all the Tesla cars have. Uh, you know, highly uh, energy optimized inference computers in them, which we call Hardware Three. Uh, it's a Tesla designed uh, computer, uh, and we're now shipping Hardware Four, which is, uh, depending on how you count it, maybe three to five times more capable than Hardware Three. Um, in a few years, there'll be Hardware Five, which will be four or five times more capable than Hardware Four, um, and. Uh, yeah, and, and I think the, the inference stuff is going to be, if you're, if you're trying to serve potentially billions of queries per day, uh, inference, uh, energy optimized inference is extremely important. Um, you, you, know, you can't even throw money at the problem at a certain point um, because you, you, know, you need the electricity generation, you need the step down voltage transformers. And, uh, you know, so if, if, you, if you actually don't have enough, you know, Energy and or and enough uh, transformers, you you can't like run your transformers. You need transformers for transformers. Um, so, um, so I think I think Tesla I think Tesla will have a significant advantage um, in energy efficient inference. Then Dojo is obviously about training, as the name suggests. Um, you know, Do Dojo One is. Um, I think it's a good initial entry for training efficiency. Um, it has some limits, especially uh, on um, memory bandwidth. Uh, so it's it's not it's not well optimized to run uh, LLMs. Uh, it does do a good job of um, processing images. Um, and then Dojo to uh, we've taken a lot of steps to alleviate the memory bandwidth constraint such that it, it is uh, capable of running LLMs as well as um, other forms of uh, AI training efficiently. Um, 
my prediction is that we will go from silic an extreme silicon shortage today um, to probably uh, a voltage transformer shortage in about a year, and then a an electricity shortage a year in, in two years. That's roughly where things are trending. Unless we can really improve serving efficiency. Well, that, that's why the, the basically the, <clears throat> the I think the, met, the the metric that will be most important in a few years is um, useful compute per unit of energy. Yeah. Um, and in fact, if, even if you scale, like obviously you scale all the way to to like the Kardashev level, the useful compute. Um, Per, you know, per joule is still the, the thing that matters. Uh, you, you can't increase the output of the sun. Uh, so then it's just, well, how much useful stuff can you get done for the, you know, for as much energy of the sun that you can harness. So do you see XAI <laughs> leveraging this custom silicon at all, given how important energy efficiency is, or maybe working together with the Tesla team at all on that, or? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Do you foresee XAI working with Tesla at all, leveraging some of this custom silicon, maybe designing their own in the future? Okay. Or we can just do it. What is the question? The question was if we're going to work together with the Tesla um, silicon team okay. at XAI. Um, yeah, so we are going to you know, work with Tesla on, uh, you know, the Silicon front and maybe on, on the AI software front as well. Um, obviously, any relationship with Tesla has to be an arm's length transaction because uh, Tesla is a publicly traded company and a different, different shareholder base. Um, so, uh, if it, but obviously, it's a, it, it would be like a naturally, you know, natural thing to uh, work in cooperation with, with Tesla. And I think uh, it, it will be of you know, mutual benefit to Tesla as well uh, in accelerating Tesla's uh, self-driving uh, capabilities, like which is really about solving real-world AI. Um, I, I am feeling very, very optimistic about Tesla's progress on the real-world AI front, but obviously the more smart humans that uh, help make that happen, the better. Uh, okay, Kim.com. Hey, Elon, thanks uh, for bringing me up. Congrats on putting a nice team together. It seems like you found some good talent there for uh, XAI. My question is, you mentioned not too long ago that you think AGI is possible within the next five years. And whoever achieves AGI first and achieves to control it will dominate the world. Uh, those in power clearly don't care about humanity like you do. How are you going to protect XAI, especially from a deep state takeover? That's a good question, actually. Um, well, I, I mean, first of all, I think I think it's it's not going to happen like overnight. It's not going to be like one day it's, you know, n not AGI, next it is. It's going to be gradual you'll, you'll see it coming um, I guess in the, in the US at least there's 
there are fair, you know, fair number of protections against uh, government interference. Um, so I guess, you know, we, we obviously use the legal system to prevent, uh, you know, improper government interference. Um, <clears throat> so I think, uh, I, I think we do have some protections there that are, that are pretty significant. Um, but we should be concerned about that. It's not, it's not a risk to be dismissed. Um, um, so, it, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is a risk, and, uh, but I, I, like I said, I think we've, we've got probably, probably the best protections of, of any place uh, in, are, are in the U.S. in terms of limiting the power of government to um, interfere with um, non-governmental organizations. Um, but it's something we should be careful of. I, I don't know, if, you know, what better, to, better to do than, than um, you know, I, I think it's probably best in the U.S. I, you know, it's I'm open to ideas here. Um, you know, I know, I know you you're not the the, the biggest fan of the U.S. government. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> but you know, the problem is they already have a tool called the National Security Letter, which they can apply to any tech company in the U.S. and make demands of, you know, the company to fulfill certain requirements without even being able to tell the public about these demands, and that's kind of frightening, isn't it? Well. I mean, there really has to be a very major national, national security reason um, to secretly uh, demand things for companies. Um, and now it obviously depends strongly on the willingness of that company to fight back against uh, things like uh, FISA requests. Um, and, um, you know, at, at Twitter or XCorp, as it's now called, uh, the we, we're you know, we will respond to FISA requests, but we're not going to rubber stamp it any like it used to be. It used to be like anything that was requested would just get rubber stamped and go through, uh, which is not which is obviously bad for the public. Um, so that so we we we're, we're much more rigorous uh, in uh, and we are being much more rigorous in, in not just rubber stamping FISA requests. Um, and you know, it really has to be a, a, a danger to the public that that uh, that we agree with, and um, we will. You know, oppose with legal action uh, anything we think is not in the public interest. Um, it's the best the best we can do, um, and uh, we're, we're the only social media company doing that, as far as I know. Um, you know, uh, and it, it used to be just open season on, uh, as you saw from the Twitter files. Um, and I, I was encouraged to see the recent legal decision, um, where, where the courts reaffirmed uh, that uh, the government cannot break the First Amendment of the Constitution. Um, Obviously, um, so that that was a good uh, good legal decision. Um, so, so that's encouraging. Um, so, so I think yeah, a lot of it actually does, does depend um, on the, the willingness of a company to oppose uh, government demands in the U.S. And obviously, our willingness will be high. Um, will so and so, I, but I, like I'm, I, I don't know anything more that we can do than that. Um, and, um, but we'll try to also be as transparent as possible. So, you know, the, the, the citizen, other citizens can uh, raise the alarm bell and, 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 you know, oppose government interference if, if we can make it clear to the public that, that we think something is happening that is not in the public interest. Fantastic. So do we have your commitment if you ever receive a national security request from the U.S. government, even when it is prohibited for you to talk about it, that you will tell us that that happened? Um, I mean, it really depends on the gravity of the situation. I mean, I would be willing to go to prison or risk prison if I think the, the public good is at risk uh, in, in a significant way. Um, you know, that's that's the best I can do. That's good enough for me. Thank you, Elon. Thank you.
on on a more positive uh, note, <laughs> how how do you want XAI to benefit humanity, and and how is your approach different to other AI projects? Maybe that's a a, a more positive question. Well, you know, I've really struggled with this whole AGI thing for for a long time, and I've I've been somewhat resistant to uh, work on. W- making it happen um you know and and uh you know the the, the reason i should say like just give you some backstory on on open ai <clears throat> i mean the reason open ai exists is because uh after google acquired deep mind um and i used to be close friends with uh, larry page um i would have these long conversations with him about ai safety and uh he he just wasn't taking ai safety at least at the time um seriously enough um and um, and in fact, at one point, called me a speciesist for being uh, oh, too much on team humanity. I guess, uh, and I'm like, okay, so what you're saying is you're not a speciesist? Uh, I don't know. That seems great. That doesn't seem good. So, so, so and and at, at the time, <clears throat> you know, with Google and DeepMind combined. Um, you know, Larry, with the support, if, if, you know, they have super voting control. So provided Larry has either the support of Sergey uh, or um, Eric, then they have total control over um, what's now called Alphabet. Uh, so, 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 and they had, so they had probably three quarters of the AI talent in the world and lots of money and lots of computers. Um, so it's like, man, we need some kind of sort of counterweight here. Uh, so... That's where I was like, well, what's the opposite of Google? Google DeepMind would be an open source nonprofit. Um, now, because uh, fate loves irony, um, <laughs> OpenAI is now super closed source um, and, and, frankly, voracious for profit, um, because uh, they're, they're, they want to spend. My understanding is a hundred billion dollars in three years, which requires, you know, if, if you're trying to get investors for that, you, you've got to make a lot of money. Um, so, uh, you know, OpenAI has strayed quite, you know, really in the opposite direction from its sort of founding charter, which is, uh, again, very ironic, but fate loves irony. And there's a friend of mine, Jonah Nolan, who, who uh, says the, the most ironic outcome is the most likely. Um, well, here we go. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, so now, now hopefully XAI is not even worse. But I mean, I think we should be careful about that. Um, but it, but it really seems like look it, at this point, it's it, AGI is going to happen. So there's two choices: either be a spectator or a participant. And as a spectator, one can one can't do much to influence the outcome. As a participant, uh, I think you know that we we we, we can. Com- com- Create a competitive, an alternative that uh, is hopefully better than um, Google DeepMind or OpenAI and Microsoft. Um, you know, in, in, in both the cases of, of uh, you know, like Alphabet, you know, if you look at like the incentive structure, Alphabet is a you know publicly traded company has a, you know gets gets a lot of um, you know has has a lot of uh, Incentives to, to 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 behave like a it's got public company incentives essentially. Um, you've got all these like ESG mandates and stuff um, that I think push companies in questionable directions. Um, and then Microsoft has a similar uh, set of incentives um, as a you know as a company that's not publicly traded. XAI does, is not subject to the market market based incentives uh, or really. The non-market-based ESG incentives, so um, you know we're a little a little freer to operate, and you know I think our our AI can give answers that uh, people may find controversial, even though they are they are actually true. <laughs> you know, uh, so they might not, you know, they 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 won't be politically correct at times, um, and they will. Probably a lot of people will be offended.
Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Scovelizer? Yeah. Uh, okay. Twitter has a lot of data in it that could help build a validator, uh, i.e. check the, some of the facts that uh, a system kicks out, because uh, we all know that GPT confabulates, you know, things, makes things up. And so that's one place I'd like to hear you talk about. The other place is... Um, ChatGPT found me a screw at a Lowe's, but it didn't find me a coffee at San Jose International Airport. Are you building an AI that has a world knowledge, a 3D world knowledge, to navigate people to around the world to different things? Well, I, I think it's it's really not going to be a very good AI if it can't find you a coffee at the airport. Um, so, yeah, I guess it, it, we need to understand the physical world as well. Uh, not just the internet. Um, so anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot. You guys should talk more. Yeah, those are great ideas, Robert, especially the one about verifying information online or on Twitter is something that we've thought about. Uh, on Twitter, we have community notes, so that's actually a really amazing data set uh, for training a language model to try to verify verify facts on the internet. Um, we'll have to see whether that alone is, is enough because we know that with the current technology, there's a lot of weaknesses like... Uh, it's unreliable, it hallucinates facts, and we'll have to probably invent specific techniques to counter that and to make sure that our models are more factual, that they have better reasoning abilities. So that's why we brought in people with a lot of expertise in those, uh, in those areas, um, especially uh, mathematics is something that we really care about, where we can uh, you know, verify uh, that the proof of a theorem is correct automatically. And then uh, once we have that ability, we're, we're going to try to uh, expand that to more fuzzier areas, you know, things that where there's no um, mathematical truth anymore. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the truth is not a popularity contest. Um, but if, if, if one trains on, like, you know, sort of what the most likely word is that follows another word um, from, a data, from an internet data set, then um, there's obviously that, that, uh, that's, that's a pretty major problem um, in that it, it will give you an answer that is uh, popular but wrong. Um, so, you know, it, like it used to be that most people thought, well, probably maybe almost everyone on earth thought that the sun revolved around the earth. And so if you, you know, if you did like some sort of training on, uh, some GPT training on uh, in the past, we'd be like, oh, the sun revolves around the earth because everyone thinks that. Um, that doesn't make it true. Um, you know, if, if a Newton or Einstein comes up with something that is actually true, um, it doesn't matter if all the other physicists in the world disagree. It's the reality is reality, um, so it has to. You have to ground the answers in uh, reality. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, the current models just imitate the data that they're trained trained on, and what we really want to do is to change the paradigm away from that to actually models discovering the truth. So not just you know uh, repeating what they've learned from the training data, but actually making true new insights, new discoveries uh, that we can all benefit from. Yeah. See, uh, so anybody on the team want to want to say anything or uh, ask questions that do you think maybe haven't been asked yet? Sure, I can. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, I guess some of us heard your uh, 
like future mm-hmm. AI spaces on Wednesday about so that's something I think on a lot of us mind is like the regulations and um, the AI safety spaces how the current development and also the international international coordination problems and how the the US com- AI companies will affect uh, this global AI development so um, yeah like the so, you know, do you want to give a summary on what you talked about on Wednesday? So essentially, you said like the the regulations would be good, but you don't want to slow it down the 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 uh, the progress too much. That would that's essentially what you said. Uh, um, yeah, I think the the, the right um, way for a regu- regulations to be done is to start with uh, insight. So first, uh, you know, you, you've, you know, any kind of regulatory authority, whether public or private, um, first tries to understand like. Make sure there's like a broad understanding, and then there's a you know proposed rulemaking, um, and if if that proposed rulemaking is agreed upon by all or most parties, then it, you know there's, then it gets implemented. You know the, you give companies some period of time to implement it, um, but I, I think overall it should not meaningfully slow down uh, the advent of uh, AGI, uh, or if it does slow it down, it's not going to be from out for a, like a very long time. Um, and probably a little bit of slowing down is uh, worthwhile if if it's a significant improvement in safety. Um, like it's if, if you know, like my prediction for AGI would you know roughly match that, uh, which I, I think Rick right, right as well at one point said twenty twenty nine. That would rough. That's roughly my guess too. Um, give or take a year. So if uh, you know, if it takes like let's say an additional six months or twelve months for AGI, that's uh, really not a big deal. If it's uh, you know like a, a, a spending a year to make sure AGI is safe is probably worthwhile. You know if if that's what it takes, but I, I wouldn't expect it to be a substantial slowdown. Yeah, and I can also add that um, on like understanding. The inner working of, of advanced AI is probably the most ambitious projects out there as well, and also aligns with XAI's mission of understanding the universe. And it's probably not possible for an aerospace engineers to build a safe rocket if, it, if they don't understand how it works. Um, and that's yeah, the same yeah, approach yeah. we want to take at <clears throat> XAI for the our safety plans. And as the AI advances across different stages, the risk also changes, and it will only be fluid um, at, across all the stages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if I think about like how what 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 actually makes uh, regulations effective in car, with cars and rockets, it's actually it's not so much that the regulators are instructing Tesla and SpaceX, but more that. Uh, since, since we have to th- think about things internally and then justify it to regulators, it makes us just really think about the problem more. Um, and that's and in thinking about the problem more, it, it makes it safer, as opposed to the regulators specifically pointing out uh, ways to make it safer. It just forces us to think about it more. Uh- can I, add a, I, I just wanted to make another point, so independent of the safety. It's more like uh, my experience at Alphabet was that it was extremely, there was a lot of red tape around involving external people like uh, other entities to collaborate with or expose our models to them because of the a lot of um, red tape around exposing anything that we were doing internally. So I wanted to ask Elon whether so I, I hope that here we have a bit more freedom to do so, or what's your philosophy about uh, collaborating with more external entities like academic institutions or other researchers in the area? So, 
Yeah, I certainly support collaborating with others. Um, so, um, I mean, it sounds like you know some of the, yeah, uh, concerns with uh, like any kind of like large publicly traded companies is like they're they're worried about being embarrassed in some way or being sued or I don't know something. Um, but they, they, there's a like <laughs> somewhat proportional to the number of the size of the legal department. So, <laughs> um, our legal department currently is zero. So um, that, that, you know, it won't be zero forever, but, uh, you know, the, uh, you, it's also very easy to sue publicly traded companies like class action lawsuits are, I, I mean, we desperately need class action lawsuit reform in the United States. Um, the, the ratio of, uh, like, it, it's the, the ratio of, like, good class action lawsuits to bad class action lawsuits is way out of whack. Um, and it effectively ends up being a tax on consumers. Um, you know, and somehow other countries are able to survive without class action. So, like, it's not clear we need that, that body of law at all. Um, but but that, that is a, a major problem with uh, publicly traded companies. So, uh, it's just, yeah, non-stop legal, non-stop lawsuits. Um, yeah, so I do support uh, collaborating with with others, um, and, uh, and generally being uh, actually actually open. Um, so, <clears throat> you, you know, the, the thing I try is also, it, it's actually it's, it's quite hard to uh, like like if, if you're if you're innovating fast, uh, that that's the that, that is the actual competitive advantage is the pace of innovation, as opposed to uh, any given innovation, um, you know that really has been like the strength of uh, Tesla and SpaceX is that the rate of innovation is uh, the competitive advantage, not not what has been developed at any any one point. Um, in fact, SpaceX there's almost no patents, um, and Tesla uh, open sources patents, so you can we use all our patents for free. Um, so. So long as uh, SpaceX and Tesla continue to innovate rapidly, that's the actual defense against competition, as opposed to, you know, patents and trying to hide things, you know, and, and, and just treating patents like, um, like I'm basically like a minefield. Um, the, the reason we open source up, like Tesla does continue to make patents and open source them in order to basically be a minor mover, <laughs> it's a monkey minesweeper, <laughs> aspirationally a minesweeper. We still get sued, sued by patent trolls, it's very annoying, but um, but we actually literally make patents and open source them in order to be a minesweeper. Oh, okay. Hey, Walter. Hey. Um a lot of the talk about AI since March has been on large language models and generative AI. You and I, for the book, also discussed the importance of real-world AI, which is the things including coming out of both Optimus and Tesla FSD. To what extent do you see XI, XAI involved in real-world AI as a distinction to what, uh, say, OpenAI is doing and you have a leg up to some extent by having done FSD. Yeah, right. I mean, Tesla is is the the leader. I think by pretty long margin in uh, real world AI. Um, in fact, the degree to which uh, Tesla is advanced in real world AI is is not well understood. Um, yeah, um, and I, I guess since I'm spent a lot of time with the Tesla AI team, I, I kind of know, you know, how, how real world AI is done. Um, and and th there's a lot to be gained by collaboration with, with Tesla. Um, you know, I think bi-directionally, XAI can help Tesla and vice versa. Um, you know, we have some collaborative relationships as well, like our material science team, which I think is maybe the best in the world. Uh, is uh, uh, actually shared between uh, Tesla and SpaceX, um, and that, that's actually quite helpful for recruiting um, the, the best uh, engineers in the world because uh, it's, it's just it's like more interesting to work on advanced electric cars and rockets um, 
than, than just either one or the other. So, um, like that was really key to recruiting Charlie Quillman, who, who runs the you know, um, advanced materials team. Um, it was he was like he was at he was at Apple and I think pretty happy at Apple and and be like well he could work on electric cars and rockets he's like hmm, that sounds pretty good I'll I'll he, so he wouldn't he wouldn't take either one of the jobs but he's willing to take both. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it, that that is a really important thing and like I said there are like some pretty pretty big insights that we've gained at Tesla <clears throat> in trying to understand real real world AI. Um, you know, taking taking video input and compressing that into um, a vector space, uh, and then uh, ultimately into steering and pedal uh, outputs. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, Optimus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Optimus. Uh, that you know, Optimus is still still at the early stages. Um, but it, Optimus, uh, and we definitely need to be very careful with Optimus at scale once it's in production, um, that, that you have um, a hard-coded way to turn off Optimus uh, for obvious reasons, I think. Um, like, it, this has got to be a, a hard-coded ROM lo local cutoff um, that, can, that you can, no, no amount of uh, updates from the internet can change that. Um, so, so we'll make we'll make sure that Optimus is like quite easy to shut down. Um, it's extremely uh, extremely important because <laughs> at least if the you know the car is like intelligent, well, at least you can climb a tree or go up some stairs or something, you know, go in a building. But Optimus can follow you in the building. So, <laughs> um, we, any any kind of robot that can follow you in the building and that is intelligent and connected. Uh, we, we got to be super careful with uh, safety. Thanks. No problem. Uh, let's see. So, any last things we should, we should touch on? Yeah, so, so one thing I wanted to just talk about before we're concluded is how uh, is, is how impactful, sorry about that little feedback, <laughs> is, is just about the, the impactfulness of, of AI as, as a means of, you know, uh, providing equal opportunity uh, to humanity from all walks of life and the important uh, the importance of democratizing it as far as our mission statement goes. Because if you, if you think about, you know, the, the, the history of humanity and, you know, access to information, it wouldn't, there was, you know, before the printing press, it was incredibly hard for people to get access to, to new forms of knowledge. And, and you know, being able to, to provide that, you know, level of communication to people is hugely deflationary in terms of, you know, wealth and opportunity inequality. And so we're really at like a new, you know, uh, inflection point in the development of society when it comes to getting everyone the same uh, potential for, for great outcomes, regardless of your, your position in life. And so when, when we're talking about, you know, removing the monopolization of ideas and about controlling this technology from, you know, uh, you know, paid subscription services or even worse from, you know, the the political censorship that may come with whatever, you know, capital that has to supply these models. It, we're, we're really talking about democratizing people's opportunities to 
not only, you know, better their position in life, but just, you know, advance their their social status in the world at an unprecedented level in, in history. And so uh, as, as a company, when we, we talk about the importance of truthfulness and being able to, you know, reliably trust these models, learn from them and, and make scientific advancement, make societal advancements, we're really just talking about improving people's qualities of life and improving everyone, not just, you know, the, the top you know, tech people in Silicon Valley who have access to to it. It's it's really about giving this access to everyone. Um, and I think that's a, a mission that our whole team shares. And before we sign off here, uh, just one last question for Elon. So assuming that XAI is successful at building human level AI or even beyond human level AI, um, do you think it's reasonable to involve the public in decision making uh, in the company or uh, how do you see that evolving in the long term? Yeah, I, 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 as with uh, everything, like, I think we're very open to critical feedback and, and welcome that. Um, we should be criticized. Um, uh, that's a good thing. Um, I, actually, one of the things that I like sort of X slash Twitter for is that uh, there's plenty of negative feedback on Twitter, um, which is uh, helpful for ego compression. Um, so... <laughs> Um, so, um, but, so the, the, the best thing I can think of right now is that any human that wants to ha sort of have a vote in the future of XAI ultimately should be allowed to. So basically human, provided you can verify that you're a real human <laughs> and, um, that any, any human that wishes to have a vote in the future of XAI should be allowed to have a vote in the future of XAI. Yeah. Maybe that's like some normal fee, like 10 bucks or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 10 bucks and prove you're a human. Um, and then you can have a vote, you know. Anyone who's interested. <laughs> that's the best thing I can think of right now, at least. All right, cool. Uh, on, on that note, thank you for participating, and um, we'll we'll keep uh, keep you informed of uh, any progress that we make, and um, and look forward to uh, having a lot of uh, great.